would you know what one looks like? No one's ever seen Ripper. Welcome once again, my fellow manipulators of Digital Fate. I'm Richie, this is Capricorn. Today's deck is honestly my favorite deck in quite a while, and we're doing some pretty crazy things, and we're finally putting Boros Convoke where it deserves to be, which is under my heel, damn it. Uh, this deck is called Ripper Knot. Why? Because Vein Ripper is an absolute juggernaut in this deck, and it goes all the way. Before we talk about the deck, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, do all the things, press all the buttons, leave me a comment down below letting me know how you found my channel because we are on our way to 6k subs and we're going to get there really quick guys. Honestly, things have been wild lately, so thank you for all your support. Uh, also, huge shout out to my patrons over at patreon.com slash quarantined Capricorn. That's Yuckfoozy, Hector, and Kaylin at the Brew Crew Elite tier. Marlac at the Brew Crew tier, and then of course our forever CPU savior Terrence Rohrbach. You guys are the lifeblood of everything I do. Thank you so much for your contributions. Honestly, I know I say it every single video, but it honestly means a lot, and it really, really helps keep me going. So thank you for the inspiration, and I appreciate it. Also, catch me live Monday through Friday over on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash quarantined Capricorn. If I'm alive and I'm breathing, I'm there and I'm streaming, Speaking of streaming, I'll be streaming this week all of the spoilers that are coming out for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So if it's the first week that this thing is live, keep in mind, on Twitch, spoiler season, it's all coming. The floodgates are open. Expect a lot. It's all going to come up here on YouTube as well. So uh, be ready for the spoilers because they're on their way. I'm going to link that up above and down below so that you guys are ready, ready to check those out because I'm really excited about that set. I didn't expect to be, but I am. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling because we really need to talk about this deck. It's kind of bananas. I know I say that about every deck, but this deck is really... Let's talk about the deck. Alright, so it's time to send Boros Convoke packing. If you guys are as sick of that deck as I am, and in fact, just aggro in general, then this deck might be the one for you. We're taking some notes from that deck, we're doing some similar things, but we're turning it completely on its head. Uh, you'll see. So what we're doing is we're going wide with a bunch of creatures, a bunch of artifacts, and then we're able to double dip on uh, into two different strategies, two, two different synergies at the same time with that huge board of artifacts and or creatures. So starting off here, We've got Vein Ripper, right? Six mana, six five, flying ward, sacrifice a creature. Whenever a creature dies, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Uh, this guy is particularly good because if they want to get rid of him with targeted removal, they have to sack a creature, which triggers the drain two. And then when he dies, it also triggers the, dr the drain two. So you drain for four and make them lose a creature and their removal spell just to get rid of them. So he's good in any deck. You guys have probably seen him popping up in some decks here or there. But in this deck he's even better because when you're going super wide with creatures you have plenty of ways to trigger him with your own creatures and just end the game outright. But we don't want to wait until we get six mana, right? Because by that time Boros Convoke and, and Mono Red and Aggro decks like that, they've probably already finished the game. So what we're doing is, like I said before, we're double dipping into two different synergies at the same time. So our go wide board not only helps get value off Vein Ripper and finish the game when we get a Vein Ripper onto the battlefield, but it also helps us get our Vein Ripper out onto the field super early. And that's by using Vat of Rebirth. This is a one mana artifact Whenever another artifact or creature is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you put an oil counter on Vat of Rebirth. And then at any time you can spend three mana, tap it, remove four oil counters, return any creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. You have to activate that ability as a sorcery though. Uh, three mana, bring anything back. And you can keep doing it recursively. So the idea here is this gets to four counters very quickly 
through some of our sack outlets, and even through just maybe chump blocking or just slamming our guys into our opponent's face and him blocking and killing some of our guys organically. There's lots of ways to get counters on Vat of Rebirth super quick. And what's really cool about it too is even tokens, when tokens die, they technically hit the graveyard before disappearing. So even like a blood token, a treasure token, a clue token, being sacrificed is going to put a counter on Vat of Rebirth. So there's a ton of stuff in this deck that's going to do that. And the Vat's just going to get really big with counters really quick and be able to speed out a Vein Ripper. How do we get the Vein Ripper in the graveyard to begin with? We'll get to that in just a little bit. First, I want to talk about our other card that we're using to reanimate. In addition to the four Vat of Rebirths, uh, we've got two Illicit Masquerade. And this is an enchantment for four mana. It flashes in, and when it enters, you put an imposter counter on each creature you control. And then whenever a creature you control with an imposter counter on it dies, you exile it and return another target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this is another way where when we go super wide with creatures, we can slam an illicit masquerade. Sometimes we can just do it in response to removal since it has flash, which can be pretty wild. Um, and then when something dies, we just get our big bombs back like Vein Ripper. Uh, we have even more big, big bombs that we'll get to in just a minute, but I think it's really nice having two of these in conjunction with the four Vat of Rebirths. It gives us a nice six card package uh, for reanimation. So not all of the pressure is on Vat of Rebirth. We're not in a situation where like, if we don't have Vat of Rebirth early, we're just gonna lose, right? We've got a six card package instead of just the four. So uh, I think the two illicit masquerades are perfect. I've even considered going up to three because it's just that good. But um, super helpful here. We can even just sacrifice our token creatures after they get these counters on them and bring back super huge threats. So how are we getting things into the graveyard? Let's go back to the, the bottom of the curve. So first of all, Voldaren Epicure. One, one for one. This is not a new card. You know what this card is, what it does things for one damage when it enters the battlefield, also creates a blood token, and that blood token hyper-synergizes with everything we're doing. Not only is it an artifact that when it becomes sacrificed will put a counter on Vat of Rebirth, but it's also going to let us discard and draw, so we can discard our Vein Ripper and draw into even more gas and set ourselves up with a Vein Ripper that's ready to come back onto the battlefield via Vat of Rebirth or Illicit Masquerade. Uh, we've also got four Novice Inspector for the same reason. Another one drop, one, two. When it enters the battlefield, you investigate. Now, this won't let us get a discard outlet for the Vein Ripper, but it will give us another artifact on the field as well as a creature. Um, and that's an artifact that's a clue token that we can sacrifice to draw a card later. And we do get a counter on the Vat of Rebirth if we sacrifice it to draw a card. And then we've also got Gleeful Demolition as another sack outlet for both the Blood Token from the Epicure and the Clue Token from the Novice Inspector. It's going to destroy our artifact, give us 3-1-1 Gobbos, and then when the artifact dies, it's going to trigger the Vat of Rebirth. So, a lot of ways to get value off these cards already, but moving into the 2-drop slot, we've got 4 Oni Cult Anvil. This is a key part of the deck. What this does is it lets us sacrifice these blood tokens, these clue tokens, and even sometimes our creatures for the reasons we want to sacrifice it, get, getting counters on Vat of Rebirth or triggering the Vein Ripper or whatever the case may be, and then get another 1-1 one, one to replace it when it dies, which is super sweet. It also gives us another sack outlet, so if we just need a way to sacrifice an artifact so that we can trigger the Vat of Rebirth, or maybe sacrifice an artifact creature that has a masquerade counter on it, or uh, an imposter counter rather on it, um, so that we can bring something back. This is a way to enable those sacrifices. So it's just multifunctional. It does everything we want to do. It helps us go super wide. It gets in a little bit of extra silver lining damage in the form of these pings. Uh, and it gives us this sack outlet to trigger all of the things we want to trigger. We've also got four Blood Tithe Harvester. Now, this is the other card in the deck that's giving us blood tokens, which are absolutely crucial. So now we have eight cards that give us blood tokens when they enter, 
Those blood tokens are going to be really crucial for getting Vein Ripper into the graveyard. Uh, but then we also have this 3-2 two for 2 that can act as pseudo removal. So either it can come down on turn 2, put pressure on your opponent, force them to waste their turn using removal on it, or we can just use it as a source of removal ourselves. If we got two blood tokens on the field, we can give something minus four, minus four. Uh, if it goes to the graveyard, we can potentially bring it back with a vat of rebirth, because a lot of times we get so many counters on this that it's not really a waste. Like, we can bring back so many things with this. You'd be surprised how fast this fills up with the oil counters. Uh, so, you know, needing to bring back a Blood Tithe Harvester in the mid-game to, you know, just drag the game out that one extra turn before we start bringing back our bombs can sometimes be all you really need. And when it comes back, it's going to generate another Blood Token. So maybe you go from 2 to 4 or 4 to 6. Uh, sorry, sorry, 1 to 2 or 2 to 3. So minus 2, minus 2 to minus 4, minus 4, or minus 4, minus 4 to minus 6, minus 6. Maybe you finally kill that Shelly. Maybe it makes all the difference in the world. So having the extra ability of bringing back the Harvester or even our 1-1s with the Vat of Rebirth, if the situation calls for it, is sometimes really, really good, deceptively good in and of itself. Like, obviously, we want to bring back our huge, bomby threats, but even just recursively being able to bring back these other creatures, because the mana cost is low, and because this thing fills up with counters faster than you'd really expect it to, um, we can still get a ton of value out of that, and sometimes that's enough to just close the game, which is kind of wild. Uh, moving on to the three drop slots, we've got two Anum Pakal. This is a card I wish I could include more of, but the deck is already jam-packed with cards as it is. One, two for three mana. You guys have probably seen this guy around. Whenever you attack with one or more non-gnome creatures, you put a counter on Anum Pakal, and then you make X11 gnome artifact creature tokens, where X is the number of counters on Anum Pakal. So even just one trigger off this guy, swinging with something the turn that you play it, is going to give you that one gnome, and in conjunction with that, you can sacrifice that gnome to get another 1-1 one, one off the Oni Celt Anvil, to get another counter on the Vat of Rebirth, or maybe you flashed in an Illicit Masquerade, and now sacking it is going to let you get something big back. So being able to generate artifact creature tokens every turn so that we can enable all the things we're trying to do, while also helping us go wide so that we can profit off the things we're trying to do after we do them is super rad and this deck it uh this card is super perfect for the deck because of it we've also got one nahiri the unforgiving which is surprisingly perfect for the deck so i don't really recommend playing with more than one because it is legendary and uh we don't want to go too deep into things that aren't providing us with artifacts that we might need to fuel the anvil and the gleeful demolition but as a one of I kind of love this. It can come out as early as turn 3 if you're using Phyrexia Mana to play, uh, pay for it. And it kind of does everything we want to do. It can plus 1 to discard a card and then draw a card, which helps us get our bombs into the graveyard to bring back with our recursion. You can 0 loyalty to exile a creature or equipment. The equipment part doesn't matter in this deck, but exile a creature with mana value less than Nahiri's loyalty from your graveyard. Make a token of it. That token gets haste but then you have to exile the token at the beginning of the next end step. In this deck, that problem is mitigated a bit, be, uh, a bit because... <sighs> a bitch. It's mitigated a bit because we can bring back our early things like Blood Tithe Harvester, Novice Inspector, and Valdaran Epicure, and even though the creature themselves only last until end of turn, the tokens that they generate when they enter the battlefield don't. They're going to stick around forever, and we're still going to be able to use them to get value the same way we would if we had hard casted the spell. But then the haste also matters because with Blood Tithe Harvester, we get access to this ability to tap and sack it and kill an opponent's creature uh, right away. And since it's just going to die at end of turn anyway, if, if we're making a copy of it with Nahiri, uh, being able to use that ability right away with haste and just kill a creature, getting basically free creature removal while also getting another blood token onto the battlefield is super, super good. Uh, not only that, you can plus one, and until end of uh, until your next turn, up to one target creature attacks a player each combat if able. 
So you can actually use this to force one of their creatures to attack you. And that way you can chump block if you need a way to just get your guy dead and don't have a sack outlet so that you can trigger the Vat of Rebirth or the Vein Ripper or the Illicit Masquerade or whatever the case may be. You just force them to attack you and then you can chump block and you can get the triggers you need. Or, or maybe you can trade in combat to get rid of that creature that you don't have another way to get rid of. So there's a lot of extra value just tacked on and this guy kind of just does a little bit of everything that we want to do. Uh, not only that, but if you are completely out of cards and you just need to gas up, the plus one discard a card, draw a card works even if you have no cards in your hand. Last but not least, we have a whole bunch of other bombs that complement the Vein Rippers really well and hyper synergize with the Vat of Rebirth and the Illicit Masquerade and everything that the deck is trying to do. So we're running three Moonshaker Cavalry, 6-6 six, six Flyer for eight mana, which there's no way we're going to cast, right? But we can bring it back with Vat of Rebirth and Illicit Masquerade, so it doesn't matter. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, creatures you control get flying and plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. So for a deck like this, where we're going super wide with creatures and then turning on a way to bring something back from the graveyard super quick, uh, slamming a Moonshaker Cavalry for just three mana and making our entire board turn into a huge flying alpha striking win is kind of nuts. Now, this card is really only going to work super well if we are bringing it back with the Vat of Rebirth. So we're going to run three of these to increase the chances of actually having one to discard. But another card that we're running to find other targets is Ho uh, Hoarding Broodlord. This is eight mana for a 7-6 flying Convoke creature. So even if we don't discard this and play it with the Vat, sometimes we just have enough creatures we can Convoke this into play. And when it enters the battlefield, we get to search our library for any card, exile it face down, and then for as long as it remains exiled, we can play it, and spells you cast from exile have Convoke. So what this does is acts as a fourth Moonshaker Cavalry. It acts as a third Vein Ripper, and it acts as a second copy of a couple of the other bombs that uh, I have yet to talk about that we'll get to in a minute. So it, it kind of just gives us more consistency and being able to get these specific win conditions we might need depending on the deck we're up against. Um, now, like I said before, it doesn't work as good with Moonshaker Cavalry because we don't really want to exile the Cavalry and then play it from exile, even though we might be able to with the addition of na us now being able to convoke it if we find it with the Broodlord. It's still much, much better to make sure we just get the Cavalry in the graveyard and bring it back with the Vat super early. So we want to we wanna go up to three on the Moonshaker Cavalry to increase the consistency of that. But it still is nice that if we need to grab one, we can with the Broodlord. But for the most part, the Broodlord's going to either grab us our Vein Ripper if we want to win the game, or one of our two other one-off Silver Bullet Bombs, which is one attracts a Grand Unifier, we all know this card and we know why it's in here. If you just need to refill, regas up, or you really, really need the lifelink or, you know, the death touch flyer to stave off an impending attack, uh, this thing gives gives it all, right? You get it all. Uh, so we can find the Atraxa with the Broodlord, or if we happen to draw into it, we can just discard it and get it back with the vet. We can very easily get the Atraxa on the field and just get a ton of value to steamroll, uh, steamroll our opponent. And then one last card that we're using here that is very overlooked is Soul of Emancipation. Now I can understand why in a normal reanimator deck this card would not see play because it has very specific uses. Uh, that you wouldn't normally want in a typical reanimator deck, but in this deck it's actually super good. So, 5-7 for 4 mana. When it enters the battlefield, you destroy up to 3 other target non-land permanents, and for each of those permanents, its controller creates a 3-3 white angel creature token with flying. So what you can do is bring this back from the graveyard if you have a specific thing you really need to destroy on the other side of the field. Maybe it's a Virtue of Persistence. I don't know. Maybe it's a Portal to Phyrexia. If you really, really just need to get rid of a key permanent on the other side, 
you can bring back the soul of Emancipation or even just find it with the Brood Lord, right? And play it with Convoke. And then what you do is you destroy that one thing you need to and they get a 3-3 Angel with flying. But you can also destroy two of your tokens or two of your little creatures like Voldar and Epicure or Novus Inspector and just get two 3-3 flyers to replace them yourself. So even though you give them a 3-3 flyer, you get two 3-3 flyers and you 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 know you, you provide yourself way more value than you're, than you're giving them and you're getting rid of their super problematic permanent so that they don't win the game. So under the right circumstances, I think Soul of Emancipation is really good. Even if you have nothing to target that you want to get rid of, you can just hit three of your little dudes, three of your little artifacts or whatever, and then uh, give yourself three, three, three flyers, which can be good enough to win sometimes on its own. Or if you absolutely need to wipe more than one thing off their side, you do have the possibility of doing that with this card as well. So the versatility and the ability to like panic button, nag this thing and kill whatever you need to kill or give yourself a bunch of flyers, like the versatility is just super good. So we are running one of these for sure. But like I said, we're normally winning with cavalry or Vein Ripper and using Broodlord to find whatever it is we need to find. Grabbing Atraxa if we need to gas up if we're not quite ready for the kill. And Soul of Emancipation as a panic button in case we really just need to deal with specific threats or make sure we get some flyers on board. So this is the deck. Uh, honestly, I fucking love it. <laughs> I'm in love with this deck. It's so cool. It goes super wide and just everything synergizes with everything else in multiple ways and it just completely goes off. The mana base is very specific so that we have access to all of our colors when we need it. So we're running almost entirely dual lands, but we are we are including this one Murex here because even though it's a little bit risky with how many two drops that need specific mana and how many one drops need specific mana, uh, it's a little bit risky having that colorless mana on later turns. The fact that we can fix whatever color we need the first turn and then go on to have a artifact creature token factory here that can just keep spitting one out every turn to add to your synergies, to, to get things back online, to get your engines going if you're out of gas and stuff, is too good to not include. So we are going to include the one. Uh, but that's the deck. <laughs> the games are absolutely wild. Uh, like I said, I'm in love with this thing. And uh, Boros, Boros combo just doesn't stand a chance unless, you know, the Shuffler hates you. And uh, sometimes the, the Shuffler does hate me. So I, I hope that that doesn't happen. Let's find out. Let's check out the games. All right, this looks pretty good. We have all of our mana. Uh, we've got decent things to curve out with. We just don't really have any reanimation yet. That's fine. We'll keep seven. Start with the Shattered Sanctum. All right. Cliffs into Harvester. Force him to cut down the Harvester. Keep a blood token. No, no cut down. Deep cavern bat. Probably gonna hit the anvil, right? If so, we just play the inspector, draw a card off the clue. Actually, you know what? No, we'll, just, we'll kill the Deep Cavern Bat here. Play this. Play this. Sack you. All's well that ends well. We had to keep the blood token so that we can discard one of these boys. Very important. question is, what are we discarding? We need our reanimation, right? Hmm. I think we discard the cavalry. We keep the things that we're most likely to be able to hard cast if we get a little lucky.
I mean, I guess we do this. I don't love it. it is what it is. Kicks, sure. No blocks. That's fine, draw a card. Alright. Epicure. We'll dump another card. Surprisingly, we're actually close to being able to play the Broodlord here. Invoke out the Broodlord and leave one thing untapped. Probably don't want him to draw a card, right? want to play another anvil but we can't do both do this one two three four five six seven eight one dies and gets replaced. Guess we'll just go for it, right? Hoarding Broodlord. Come on down. Going for the throat. Sure. We still get to find something, though. Which is wonderful. We are going to find... Illicit Masquerade. Then, we're going to sack one of these tokens to make a chump blocker and drain some life. We just got to hold on. We can play this Masquerade next turn. Ooh, boy. That's, that's gonna be dangerous. Six. He is gonna draw three cards if we let everything through. No blocks. You got for me. You got nothing for me. Huh. Didn't expect that. We have to be very careful here. So we're going to do this. I, 
think we got this, though. And we're gonna pass the turn. We do some key blocks, we flash in the Masquerade in response. And even if he's got plans to deal with it, we've got another one that we can play on our turn when he's tapped out. I think we might just win this. X equals four. Exile the top. Sure. He hit what? Nahiri of that and some lands? That's fine. Come at me, bro. We got him. He's in rough shape now. He doesn't even know what to do. Listen, Masquerade's about to rip him a new asshole. Let's go, San Juice. It's gonna be a short game and I gotta get home for lunch. Although I probably should have just flashed this in in response, right? Let's go, baby. probably want to leave that so four things is fine so let's just kill it that's fine he'll kill two of them the other two will keep the preacher will die and we'll get back whatever two things we want oh says yes yeah <laughs> oh that cavalry was about to just alpha sw alpha strike for like a hundred damage well this hand looks awful we are definitely gonna have to mulligan this No red mana is no bueno. We'll keep six here. Let's see. Novice Inspector on one. That of Rebirth, Gleeful Demolition on two. Aina Pakal on three. We're gonna toss back the Sanctum and hope we draw into a third land for Aina Pakal. I think that's better than tossing back the Aina Pakal, which would be the other option. See if we can make it work. Fumita. Fumita is a slow poke. I'll drink some nectar. It's fine. Everything is fine. I am gonna give this man the whistle though. He deserves it. Look, look at him. He deserves the whistle. I don't, I don't know what to tell you guys. He just... It wasn't up to me. Clearly it's its him. He gets the whistle. Fumaita, come on man, you're on the YouTube. 
You gotta you gotta put your best foot forward. What are you doing? Alright, start with novice inspector. He doesn't realize he's gonna look like an idiot. He's gonna look like an idiot when all of you guys are checking out the video. Right? Let me know in a comment below if you think he looks like an idiot. Like, he's clearly there because it's going f through his phases. I don't... I don't understand. I don't understand. Someone explain to me. Alright. We're gonna play the VAT. We're gonna swing. We're gonna gleeful demolition this dude. We've got Sundown Pass so we can aim him Pakal next turn. Man, we are just... We are just going for it. Alright, so next turn we should be able to Nahiri to discard the Soul of Emancipation. If we bring this thing back into play with Vat of Rebirth, we can destroy three of our things, put three more counters on the Vat. Is it even worth it to play Nahiri? Yeah, it is. We're gonna discard the soul. Stand up and fight! Play the vents. And swing. That's that's a whole lot. A whole lot of shaking going on. Whole lot of shaking going on. Every time I die, great band. Let me know in the comments if you listen to him. Alright, so he wipes our board. We get a ton of app counters. And it's all good in the hood. Let me think. Let me think. We're going to do this. Then we're going to do this. Then we're gonna do this. Uh, hold on. It won't get haste, right? So, let's swing with this first. Then, we'll Vat of Rebirth. Bring back the soul. Hit you, you, and you. And get some angels, get three more tokens on our Vat. Your board wipe did nothing, friend. Hope you have another one. I hope stalling me out earlier was worth it for you. Besides you did not, in fact, endure. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I'll drink to that. Oh, he is so good, guys. Nectar of the Gods, honestly. Jukai Visionary. You didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> magic Keeper, huh? So you're the one who's been keeping all the magic. You should share it. What are you thinking? Uh, this is good. We're going to keep it. We're going to start with the cliffs into a vat. We can go Harvester on two. If he kills our Harvester, we get a counter on the Vat. If he doesn't, we get to slam Anum Pakal the next turn and swing. Probably will, though. Show me what you've got. Come on, Mono Red. 
You're so aggressive. I'm so scared. I'm quaking. Oh no, not a monstrous rage. What am I gonna do? that how about that is that does that work is that good for you was it as, as good for you as it was for me I don't know man it was pretty good for me look at this chick what a flamer how dare you strike my anum with lightning it's rude Magic Keeper is rude. First, he's keeping all the magic for himself, right? Ridiculous. I mean, I guess we just go like this. And like, I don't know. Do we just try to race? I don't think we just try to race. No, we need to kill stuff to put counters in the vat, right? Let's just do this. We are in a very strong position here. Not next turn, but the turn after, I think we win. Do that. All right. Discard the Moonshaker Cavalry. A land. Close though. Very, very close. Ooh, an anvil. Can't really use it this turn though. <laughs> got him next turn, so we just gotta make sure we stay alive. And that Moonshaker Cavalry is coming out to play. Honestly, as long as we just have two creatures on the field. As long as one of them's the Harvester. If it's not the Harvester, then the other three need to be there. Okay, replays Monstrous Rage. Out of mana. So, this is easy. Keep as many creatures as possible so we can. We can win with the Moonshaker. Piece of cake. That's, that's called lethal where I come from. Maybe next time you won't keep all the magic for yourself. Sick. Alright. This looks pretty good. We're going to keep it. The only real problem I see is... 
we've got two slow lands. So we're going to lead with this guy. And then next turn we'll play the Forge, and we'll probably play that and Inspector, although we could play Harvester. I think that and Inspector is going to be better against this deck in particular, though. Although, Harvester is removal. But no, we'll do this. It's fine, it's fine. Come on, Ziegs. Show me what you're working with. Planes? Where are the trains and the automobiles? Denik? Is that you? Denik, my man. It's been so long. You guys ready for this shit? Pass turn. So, end of turn, we're going to discard Soul of Emancipation. We can do some pretty wild things. Where's your black mana? Where's your Rafine? Hello. I would like to give you the Angel Shrug. In fact, this man deserves the whistle. He deserved it. I don't I don't know what you want from me, guys. He I mean, he clearly deserved the whistle. He got the whistle. That's it. all there is to it. What else you got? Wedding announcement. Goodbye, soul of emancipation. Ooh. A hoarding brood lord, you don't say. How wonderful. One, two, three. I use the Masquerade and just get back the Soul of Emancipation now? No, because it targets. We have to kill Denik first. Damn it. Damn you, Denik. Damn you. Last turn. Must. You must. Goodbye, Denik. Barely knew you. What you got for me? What you got for me, Zeeks? Nothing. You've got nothing for me. Oh, well, that's just wonderful. That is just wonderful. Oh, 
Hello. Your go. I thank you, kind sir. We're a little bit limited in what we can do. We're going to grab a hoarding boot lord. Now, if we grab a two drop. Really sad. Last turn. It's fine, we'll build up some more Vat of Rebirth counters. It's fine, guys. It happens. this sure thing counter on the bat please Wait, what oh it's always shut down that is very interesting I forgot about that I completely forgot about that. A little bit of you makes me your man. Do it. You won't. Do it, old maid. Ha! Get out of here. I could soul of emancipation to make a bunch of things, but I don't know if that's good enough. All right, what are we gonna put in exile that we can convoke? Hmm. If it's a black red thing, we could play it this turn if we wanted to. Like Oni called Anvil. But I think we want something crazier. We're gonna sack the vat since it's shut down by the tide binder anyway. End the turn. We've got a vein ripper we can convoke. Obviously, he's gonna deal with our hoarding brood board. If he kills the epicure, we get back soul of emancipation. And then, since this is not going to be useful anymore. We kill this and make an angel. We kill this and make an angel. I don't know, maybe we get rid of one of his cards? Probably not. Well, that's unfortunate. Now it's not going to work. Uh... Wandering Emperor. Sure. The energy of battle, then guided like water. 
Did not see that coming. I probably should have. But I didn't. Hmm. Alright, we need a black mana really bad. Can't play the Vein Ripper yet. So we'll do this. And then we'll do this. Guess we'll just do this. Train for one. Make some jumpers. Problem is with Denik around, we can't let the Epicure die, or we actually don't get to ever bring back anything. Because it's gone, it's the last thing that can bring back something, and Denik won't let us target the thing to bring back, so that's very bad. bring back. I'm not going to bring that back yet. I think we just need the Vein Ripper. The Vein Ripper is here, but he's got one hell of a board. Alright, what do we bring back then? We need a way to just go off. I think we bring back Soul of Emancipation. I kinda have to do the thing, right? We can't really swing with the Vein Ripper. If we can stay alive and play the second Vein Ripper next turn, oh baby. Then we're in a we're in a really good position. But that's going to be tricky. Like, we'll pretty much just, I think, just beat him outright. If we can do that.
Denik. That's fine. Pass to attackers. Swings with the 6-6. Six, six. Okay, he's swinging with the flyers. Does he have another Wandering Emperor? He does, doesn't he? He does, doesn't he? He can't risk it. He can't risk it. It sucks, but we can't risk it. We really just need our Vein Ripper to survive. I, th I think we got him though. If we do, I really think we got him. Knock on wood. <laughs> All right, boys. Moment of truth. Does it no longer have Convoke? Shit. I did not realize that. Two, four, six, eight. Uh-oh. I thought it always had Convoke, but I guess the dragon needs to still be in play in order for you to actually have the Convoke. Yeah. Damn it. That changes everything. Oh, we're short one black mana and that's what's going to kill us. Target the Vein River. Oh, that's cheap. You don't have to actually target the Vein Ripper. So you don't have to pay the ward. That is so. That's so unfair. That's so crazy unfair. And it loses its flying. That's game. literally not getting enough black mana. It's the only reason we didn't win. We had him. Uh, it's slow. We don't have our black on one. I think we mulligan this. This looks a lot better. We'll keep this. We'll toss back of that. All right, we're gonna start with the cliffs and play the vat. Next turn, we'll play the harvester. See, what's great about this deck is as they deal with our board state, the vat just starts collecting tokens, right? Sometimes we don't even need to get like anything huge or crazy off the vat. To get value off of it. Sometimes just bringing back a Blood Tithe Harvester after they're all out of gas and you're all out of gas and riding it to victory can be good enough. But if we can get to our bombs, it's obviously going to be a lot better. Schooner, sure. All right. Well, we're going to go Inspector. Anvil. 
Then we're gonna tap the anvil, sack the clue token. We want to save the blood token because we want to be able to discard if we need to. Which is a little tricky because obviously we want to be able to draw cards with the clue when we're out of gas like this. Well, that's unfortunate. We're gonna have to bust the blood token, put nothing relevant in the yard because we just, we need gas. We just need gas. We just need gas. That's, that's something, I guess. I think we kill the Norns Inquisitor so that this doesn't get bigger. We get a token on our Vat of Rebirth. And like I said, worst case scenario, we can bring back a Blood Tithe Harvester with the Vat. But we've got a blood token now, so let's see if we can get lucky. Top deck something balmy. We could potentially just win next turn. If we top decked like Moonshaker Cavalry or something. Gleeful Demolition. Well, that's something, I guess. That's something. think we could go like this we get our fourth counter on the vat then we could swing with just this What's up guys? Squirrel, Striker, good to see you. Okay, that's it I guess. He doesn't, uh, doesn't want to do anything. Well, I guess we'll do this. It's very easy for us to get four more counters on this, so I'm not worried about it. Now we've got two blood tokens. So we're set up to be able to kill the schooner if we want. We can kill whatever he uses case of the Filch Falcon on. And we're going super wide. Especially if he tries to swing in. So. Ooh, Anum. Gotta try. Gotta try. No more lies. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just gonna swing everything. Probably should have kept back one Blood Tithe Harvester, right? But we get a, a counter on the Vat of Rebirth. And then we'll sack this. We get another counter on the Vat of Rebirth. We get another dude. We drain for one. Like at this point, the game's just ours, right? Even if he sweeps.
dude, even if even if he sweeps, like we've got the things. We've got all of the things. Dump a cave to Koilos. This is wild. Bring back a Blood Tithe Harvester again. We'll just swing with everything because we'll just get even more counters on the vat of rebirth it just keeps bringing everything back <laughs> so crazy puts him at two it's pretty close to over he needs to sweep the board, for sure. Come on, Adam. Plays a Steel Serret. It's gonna give this, what, lifelink? Yeah, go up to seven. Still not enough, we only got one blocker. So we've got Vein Ripper. We've got a Traxa. Discard the Vein Ripper. Get a counter on the Vat. Oh, you know what? I should have. Should have done Blood Tithe Harvester first. Should have killed the Steel Seraph first. That was my bad. That was my bad. Sack you. Bat of Rebirth, get back the Vein Ripper, swing with the boys, he has to let it all through, but he can't let it all through, so we just win, right, right, I think we got him, I'll drink to that, This man, this man is toast. He's so upset. He goes to one, this dies, triggers the Vein Ripper. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Alright, this looks good. Turn one, caves. We're going to have to get pinged for a damage, play the Novus Inspector, but then turn two, Anvil seems pretty good. Or do we turn to Harvester? I guess we're not in a rush to get the Vein Ripper into the graveyard. Because... We don't have reanimation yet. So yeah.
Although turn three, that means we're what? Playing an anvil and having one mana left over to do nothing with? So maybe we do want the harvester? Yeah, I think we'll get the Harvester out first. As tempting as it is to try and just get a bunch of anvils out ASAP. I'm just going to try and do, do it this way. Alright, so we're on. We're on a clock, right? Another case. That's fine. I'm not really worried about your, your clock, to be honest. Alright, well, we're going to put uh, the cavalry in the yard, because that's the thing we have the least likelihood of hardcasting from our hand. There's a chance we end up hardcasting the Vein Ripper. so since we don't have any reanimation yet, I don't want to stick the Ripper in the yard and then not draw it by the time we get to 6 mana and wish we had kept it in our hand. And we're just racing this dude, honestly. I am completely fine with it. We can't really race our anvils very effectively. Reckoner Raid, sure. Swings four. Sure. Alright. We'll go Anvil. We'll go, uh... Swingy McSwinger Swing. And then we'll go Lethal Demolition. Make some boys, make some more boys, and turn. <laughs> We're gonna do this. And then we're gonna sack this guy to drain. So we only end up taking really one damage. And he doesn't get to solve his thing because he still has one skeleton left. That's the downside to playing two cases. You give your opponent the ability to get rid of one of the skeletons without really any drawback. Um... We are going to sack the clue and draw. Gleeful Demolition. Good lord. Alright, well, we're going to swing. I guess we will Gleeful Demolition this guy. And end the turn. We've got plenty of blockers. It's looking like we have lethal. Next turn. Alrighty, scoops. No black mana. So we're gonna have to mulligan. This looks better. Let's do that. Make sure we have our, our lands that we need. We're going to start with the cliffs and a vat. We're going to play the harvester first because we can't really use the anvil yet. We don't want to sack our vat to it. Get the harvester out. We force him to contend with it and have to get rid of it while leaving behind the blood token to do shenanigans next turn.
Wolf of Mall Street. Alright, alright. I'm here for it. We're gonna jam the Oni Kelt Anvil. We're gonna do this. We need to get rid of that creature, I think. So we'll do that. Count out of that. Do this. Make a dude. Put another counter on the vat. Leave this last blood token so that we can discard the cavalry. Very, very important. Geological appraiser. It's another preacher. Sure. Alright. Okay. Sure thing. We're getting jiggy with it. Pass the turn. We're going to make sure we've got a chump blocker for that preacher, which then puts a fourth. I don't even think we need a chump block. We're just going to win next turn, right? Serve all of our creatures. I think we might have. We're gonna be really close. I think we're gonna leave him at two. Let's rock! Almost positive. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, pillbox. Appreciate you. I'm almost positive. We're just going to leave him at two. Oh, no, we killed him. Sick. Goodbye. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons over at Patreon. Without you guys, this channel would not be possible. So honestly, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your contributions. If you haven't yet, like and subscribe. The more likes we get and the quicker we get them, the bigger this channel will grow and the faster it will grow. I'd love nothing more than this channel to become something very special for you guys, but it's entirely up to you how fast that happens. Also, if you'd like more deck text, that's somewhere over there and if you'd like to see what else the channel's been up to lately that's somewhere up that way also subscribe circle below do all the things